Here we go. My beard, man. Yeah, it's getting bushy. Ready? I'll let you swear. Ah. <laughs> Gotta get all those rustles Ooh, out. Yeah, just letting the heat go down. Okay. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> For those of you on video, this is when we try to get um, <coughs> five <coughs> seconds of no sound so that we can, um, you know, better handle the audio quality of the podcast, which also has mm. our lovely bumpers. All right, here we go. Why, hello? Hey there. So I was at the thrift store yesterday morning. Yesterday morning? Yeah. Yesterday, yesterday morning. morning. It's been a long weekend. It has. Um, and they had a snooker table. What's a snooker table? So a snooker table is a, uh, I believe, octagonal table uh, that has a top on it for playing cards and holding your drinks. And you take the top off, and then it has a it's basically like a rebounding billiards billiards game i thought about it i would never get it but i thought about it because when i <clears throat> apparently was a uh little toddler my mom had one in the house nice yeah i have no clue how you play it i don't understand the game but there it was in the arc thrift store I'm like huh that's interesting you can find everything at a thrift store. We did. We found a most random Halo movie. Um, it was like a prequel. Had to do something while we were out. So Yeah, it's been a busy weekend. Yeah, needed 65 minutes of something in the van for the boys to watch. <laughs> and it turned into, it was actually pretty interesting. You know, as soon as we tell the kids that we're about to podcast, they are just the loudest and noisiest they ever could possibly be. Well, that's what happens when they're full of sugar. Oh my goodness gracious, yeah. yes. It's fine. <laughs> well, I'm Dale. I'm Kit. And welcome to Catholic Hitch. We are a Catholic family seeking heaven and hoping to pick up others along the way. Small talk. Well, you went into a crazy um, nesting period today yeah i guess i did so um we had to go to separate masses because we had a birthday party jonathan um our very good friend next door neighbor had his birthday party at the same time we normally go to mass so he and i went to early mass you guys went to normal mass yeah it's around noon and i come home and i go into the bedroom and everything has changed well you'd be getting close <laughs> everyone says so Everyone's like, any day now, right? Not any day, but we're getting into the yeah. time that I need to get the game face on. It isn't a bad idea. Yeah. But yeah, I'm pretty huge, and pretty soon people are going to start asking about twins, and that has already happened several times in a joking way. Mm -hmm. So you know what led to the impetus of me doing that this morning? I do tell. I went into the laundry room, and I could not walk into the laundry room because there are suitcases all over the floor. And there are um, boxes of girls' clothing. And I know. I need to handle that. I did. I picked up all the suitcases. I put the boxes of clothing consolidated on top of each other. And I thought, you know, now's the time to just get that crib out. Let's get her done. Where is it? Well, it was underneath the stairs. I know. Now it's in the boys' bedroom. Is up it? Against the, up against their bed for the moment. Oh. Yes. I guess I haven't been in their bedroom today. No. And then when I got that out, then I thought, you know, I got two hours in before Mass. Why don't I just go ahead and move the bed so that we could have either crib or bassinet uh, next to where you need it to be. And so I kind of set it up, I guess, the way we had it when we had Rosalina or Terrence. Terrence, or I think. I think we had it that way for a little while with Johnny, but then we rotated it, which yeah. it's been that way for since he was born basically now. So it's been five years since we've rotated the bedroom. I think I've been good and I haven't, I haven't changed the furniture around on you. Yeah. That's your thing for sure. 
So now it's rearranged and ready for crib or bassinet to go next to your side of the bed so that, you know, you can pass the baby over to there and hopefully they'll sleep and then pull them over when you need to. Easy access. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. And it's interesting. So I'm going to be getting a bassinet from um, one of my faith formation families because she's like, well, we're about, I was about to take it to the thrift store. And then I thought maybe you would want it. And it looks, you know, reasonably okay. So I said, yes, you know, we need, need a bassinet. It's not the kind of thing I like to purchase because it's only good for like a couple months before baby's too big. But it's kind of nice in that sweet spot of tiny babiness yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, I, I like them. Um, if you can actually get the little whippersnapper to stay in it. Yeah, that's the problem. That is the problem. I don't know how people get babies to stay in bassinets because most of the time, the moment you lay them down and walk away, they're like, no, I'm cold. I don't like this. I already pooped again. I'm hungry again. Yeah, that's a baby. That's a baby. And then you've also been kind of carrying on the nesting impulse into well, this evening and okay. giving me a little bit of anxiety. <laughs> so that started because I went into our daughter's bedroom and I see a DVD disc on the counter and it's dusty on top next to the TV. And Daddy pet peeve. Pet peeve. Don't put DVDs out because they get scratched. If you do and it's temporary, you put it you know, to where the shiny side of the disc is up and the flat labeling part is down gently so that you don't scratch anything. Then you get the case for it and you put it back. So I go in there and I find Tales of Symphona for the Wii. It's sitting there. It's been there a while. I look at Christine. I'm like, where's the case? I don't know. And she's like, deer in headlights. Oh, crap. I've been caught. And thus it begins. We start cleaning the bedroom to find things. And I find, um, well, we found her martial arts manual, which has been missing. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's great because she's got a test on Monday and she's been using mine. So good thing she's got the Half-Blood Prince copy. Um, And then, uh, let's see, we cleared out the bottom of the closet. And I think I found at least, I don't know, 20 stuffed animals, at least 20. You found a hat full of rocks. I did. I found all of the infinity stones from from this uh, uh, was that Halloween party or Here's Johnny's pa- Johnny's party. Yeah. Yeah. So we found all of those in a hat. In a hat, um, which is now clean because it's in the laundry and is in the dryer. Um, we had to clean Rosie's bed because she has been not wanting to sleep in her bed. I'm like, what's going on? And so she's been, you know, she she likes to be with others. So we thought maybe she's just feeling lonely in her bed. So she's been sleeping with Johnny. Uh, but when Johnny said he didn't want to sleep in her bed, <laughs> it was okay for her to sleep in his bed. I'm like, what's going on here? So I get up in there. He's sleeping on a bag of rocks. There's a bag of rocks. There are um, little party bags from like yeah, Halloween like and Christmas and like with all the uh, stamps and uh, the little tubes of bubbles and all that knickknackety stuff. So we got rid of all that out of the bed. All of the um, uh, at least 10 stuffed animals. Uh, I took off. So we have one of those, um, what do you call them? The little tent things that can go over the bed. It's yeah. got unicorns on it. So I took that off and she went, wow, it feels so spacious up here. It was kind of one of those Sokka head whack moments, you know? You're like, yep. oh, come on, kid. So Sokka from um, Air, La- Last Airbender. Yes, because we're watching that right now. Yeah, and it's bringing our... all that awesomeness back. Oh, yeah. One of our favorite shows. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I just... I, sometimes you just got to get in there and do stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so I walk in there and things are happening and... Then you I'm like, walk this out. This is triggering me because this is like my job. I'm supposed to take care of these things, and it's all out of control now. And there's a bag of rocks, mm-hmm. and there's a closet full of stuffies yes. and other just total junk uh-huh. and trash. And my nesting know? behavior then triggered you to go do some pregnant Pilates on the floor. Yeah, with some I don't YouTube know videos. why. I'm not sure. I think I just thought I should probably start trying to do exercise. <laughs> 
I don't know why. I don't know. I don't think it was triggered by that. I think it was, oh, my husband's not going to be doing anything for a while. <laughs> Might as well do some Pilates on the floor. Yeah, which... Were oh, they Pilates? It was It was Pilates. Okay. It was pregnant, third trimester Pilates. It was very specific. She, she looked like um, she was third trimester. Yeah, third trimester beginners Pilates. <laughs> yeah, beginners. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's important yes. to put in there. I appreciated that it was in... Um, english british accent well yeah i sound like she's yes. welsh maybe maybe and put the put the little blanket behind your bum and to help you um, for support if it helps you can imagine that you're coming down upon treacle like oh. <laughs> that was the most british thing she, she i don't said. even know what that is it's um it's a like treacle a treacle tart yeah i think it's taffy i'm pretty sure that's what treacle is oh i don't know we'll have to google that catholic hitch at gmail.com Ooh. but yeah, so I did 20 minutes of that, and whew, it was hard, and it makes you really feel unfit. Like, you you know, I'm not normally that unfit, but when I'm pregnant, it's just hard to do stuff. Um, and it <laughs> showed. I was dying with these tiny little things she was having me do, mostly in the legs. Like, oof. I was trying to be supportive as I was coming uh-huh. in and out of the bedroom. You're doing a great job, honey. That looks good. Keep going. And Go back like, into, the, ah! into the trenches. Of our daughter's bedroom. Yeah, I mean, it was a better use of my time than having anxiety over you. Yeah. Um, you know, ripping everything, all the their raccoon holes. Well, so I go in and I find one of Johnny's uh, slippers, and he comes in. He's like, "My slipper." <laughs> yeah. Why don't you look around, Johnny? Look underneath things. See if you can find the other one. So he's crawling all the way under the bed, and he's like, "I found my other slipper." I'm like, pull anything else out of there that you can find. Just like all the stuff starts oh, coming no. out from under the bed. Yeah, I mean, their children should be able to do this kind oh, of no, stuff. No. Like, you're 14 years old. No. Um, I What was it? There was a bag of art supplies or some supplies of stuff, and I asked her to put it away. And so it went right back it down? It went into the and, closet. Oh, no. And I went, oh, no, 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 no. No. Yeah. And thus, I cleaned the bottom so, of the closet. And I find another 15 stuffed animals. Mommy will in there. clean up with a trash bag. And if if they push me too far, and I have no regrets, because there's only just so much of stuff that we can have uh, in this Mama house. Mama-geddon. Yes. And they know, so they generally cooperate when it comes time to, like, lovingly give things um, to the thrift store, um, rehome things, because we just, yeah, otherwise that's what happens, is they are, it's a whole bedroom full of just knick-knack junk, a lot of broken stuff, a lot of trash. Mm-hmm. Oh. I, I understand because some of the things I zipped open, I'm like, oh, this is bringing back my childhood. Zip it back. Okay, let's put that over there. Rosie, you need to deal with this. I can't deal with it right now. <laughs> I know exactly what you're doing, but you need to clean it and up, if daughter. if mommy deals with it, yes. it's going in If the your trash. mother sees this, <laughs> you don't want that to happen. <laughs> Just trust me. It was yeah. a lot of that. Oh, I mean, we have a small house, so... We do. And I've been tired for the last six months for some reason. I don't know what's I going on. I don't know at all. <laughs> like, so there's... Yeah, normally I'm the one that kind of reconsolidates the clothes that they've grown out of to make sure that we have, you know, things in identified boxes for sizes and, you know, we're not keeping things with holes in them and stains. Yeah. I'm the one that usually handles that and it just... Oh. It snowballed over even probably the last year. I was already behind before well, we got y- pregnant. You know my method of dealing with holy clothes. Well, that goes in the trash. Oh, no. I take the pair of scissors and I turn them into shorts. Okay, yes. But you can only do that. So Although there not is a pair older. of Christina's pants that we need to get rid of because there's a hole like right on the inside of the inner thigh. I'm like, nope, <laughs> not going to have those pair anymore. No. Get rid of that. I just threw away a pair of my own that had that problem. Kids, so. too loud. Oh my goodness gracious! Sorry, I can't take it anymore. Oh, well, they have lots of chocolate and chocolate cake and um, what other chocolate things? They've had a lot of chocolate today. I am envious. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that um, it it's been a a busy day. Yeah, you know, we've been kind of going in different directions the whole day. Yesterday was a busy day, too. Maybe that can be our big talk. Sure. So you, um, well, you were being awesome, as usual. Uh, but this time you were being awesome at church. 
because it was the reconciliation retreat for yep. wrong wasn't? sacrament. Oh, that's right. Confirmation <laughs> retreat. I'll get there. Get it right. Hold on. Let me have another sip. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and it was Rosalina's. Yes. It was Alina's turn this time. Yeah. And so she was there with her confirmation, sp- or yes, confirmation sponsor. Um, and I got up at the crack of dawn uh, and brought Christina to her orange belt test. Yep. And you also had to have the other kids with you because, yes. well, Terrence could have come with me as a volunteer, but Not I can't Jonathan. have Jonathan. He no. would have, I don't know where he would have Well, it was good. It, w- it was good bonding time. Um, you know, after we get Christina there and running through the mental things of like, okay, are you ready to break your board? Your key up has to be loud. You have to have strength in it. If you don't have strength in your key up, then you're not going to break your board and kind of running through all those things and then going through a list of other things to get her ready to make sure that, you know, doing my duty to make sure that I make the test as calm as possible for her. And she did a pretty good job. I got to watch on Zoom. So while I took the boys to Panera, and used the gift card and had some breakfast with them. Uh, we were watching on Zoom as Christina's, you know, working out hard with a couple of our other uh, Westminster friends. Weird. Yeah, it, it was good. Yeah, okay. I, I enjoyed it. it. Well, for me, because I know exactly what they're doing, and, you know, I can watch and see how her foot position's going and see that she needs to pull back on her pseudo key because it's just not working all the way yet. And she's a yellow belt. She's learning. <laughs> And then I could also see other people that are in our class and how they're doing and how they're growing. So it was a lot of fun for me. So, yeah, we were doing that while um, the kids are mowing down on their food. And then um, we had to drive around. And I told Terrence, well, let's look around and maybe we'll find a thrift store or a comic book store or something. And so we're just kind of meandering because I got Zoom on. I can't really, like, shift off and go to Google and test for things. Uh, so I was just like, yeah, let's just drive around. I don't know this area very well. And it was kind of that mental map joining of different areas because we got somehow all the way over to Jewel and I can't remember the other street, but it it was like my brain couldn't comprehend that I was on the South side of 470 now all of a sudden over by the Bandamere Speedway. And that was somehow connected to where our headquarters for, our CTI Colorado Taekwondo Institute is had no idea how that those connected in my brain. So it was one of those moments, you know, we're like, wait, I can get from this place to this place. And they're only like five minutes away from each other. And then we turned around because I was getting too far and I didn't want to like get too far away just in case I didn't think anything was going to go wrong, but you know, that's just how you are. Um, and, as we were going back, Terrence is like looking at every retail strip, trying to find something to stop at. Cause he's just tired of being in a car. Uh, cause you know, it's like a 40 minute drive out there. And he, as we get close to the school, he sees that there's an ARP thrift store. And so we pull in, we go into the thrift store and we're just meandering around. And I forget how nice our thrift store is right down the street from us compared to every other thrift store I've ever been in my life and it's like you know it's a thrift store so there's like random pieces of things all over the place for like two dollars and a dollar it was somehow I avoided going to the toy section that was nice we went over to the book area and that's where we found the um, halo fall of something basically when the covenant come for the first time and you see the whole history of master chief and all of the other spartans as they're being tortured and augmented to become what they become it's a sad story really um i won't go into it because that's a whole nother thing but um christina did awesome on her test she broke her board like it was a twig just pick legged up bam popped it right out and other girls in the class, they're giving it everything, and they're just bouncing off their boards. I was like, yeah, that's my daughter. Break that board like it's a tweak. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, while you were doing that, I was um, running a retreat yes. for confirmation. Yes. So. How many kids? 75 in the group, but I'm not sure how many. I still have to count how many showed up. I mean, it was really close to full, but I knew a couple families weren't going to be there because of conflicts. 
And now I get the glorious activity of deciding whether I do a makeup retreat or not, or how I handle trying to teach these lessons, because some of what we learn isn't taught as part of their curriculum. Right. And it's interesting. So when our diocese restored the order of the sacraments of initiation, our church actually wrote its own confirmation curriculum. And that's what I taught with Christina. And when we had our own curriculum, we taught a lot of what we did in the retreat in the classrooms. So I think like the retreat became like it grew out of the fact that we ended up with a professional curriculum, which includes like an online component for people who miss the lesson. And then we can have an online program as well for at home kids. And so this was our way of trying to make sure that the content wasn't lost. So a lot of the retreat is about the Holy Spirit, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the star of confirmation, whereas Jesus will be the star of the Eucharist retreat in a couple months as they prepare for their actually receiving First Communion after their confirmation at their confirmation mass. So a lot of what we we do today is focused on you know, the idea that we are, we have a call, a universal call to holiness. And it's a part of our catechism now. Mm-hmm. And for many years, as you might remember, when we were reading about Zeli and Louis, they were living the universal call to holiness at a period in time when people did not believe you could be a saint if you were not a priest or consecrated nun. Hmm. Like in their point in history, like it just wasn't understood. They just didn't see it as being possible to become a saint in that way. That's what the book was talking about. And I think that was the attitude generally. And it is kind of a distortion of, you know, the accurate perception of, you know, priests and consecrated life being at a higher, being higher callings than married life. Right. The good, better, best. Yes. So it was kind of a distortion of that, that, oh, well, I guess if we can't be the best, then we can't be anything at all. So, um, you know, we started with talking about this is part of our catechism. This is part of what the church believes is there's a universal call to holiness. What that means is everyone is called to be a saint. And we use that language a lot in our program. And then I get to say, so that sounds great, but how do we get there? (laughs) Like, how do we implement this? Right. And that's when we start going into what we are given via the Holy Spirit. So um, when I taught the confirmation unit, you know, again, that our church wrote, we did a really cool lesson using chocolate milk. Right. So the idea is that, you know, everyone, when they come into this world, is like an empty vessel. And when we're baptized, we're filled with Christ, which is like being filled with milk. And we're also filled with the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which is like chocolate sauce. So you pour the milk into the vessel. So I had a big pitcher, poured it full of milk. Then I said, these are the gifts that we receive from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Chocolate sauce is added. And until you stir it, there's no difference. Like you can see a little bit of chocolate at the bottom and you see otherwise like a whole lot of white and So the idea of the lesson is, as I say, you know, we are like this until we open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to stir up the gifts. Right. And then, like, what people see is changed. Right. That people can see the change in us. That it's no longer, you know, what it was before. That it's something new. Yeah. And that that's the metaphor for a lot of what we're learning. Right. And just as a disclaimer for all parents out there, it doesn't mean that you need to shake your babies when they're baptized to stir up the Holy Spirit. It doesn't work the same way. Keep drinking, honey. (laughs) You're drinking for two. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, no shaking babies. But I I think that's where we began the lesson. And then we talked um, a little bit more in depth about, you know, charisms, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So we've talked about charisms on the podcast like a long time ago. I think that was our like substitute COVID. The first time we had COVID, we we played the charisms episode that we recorded really long ago. Yeah. The idea of a charism is it is a gift that is given to you, like like a special talent to help you fulfill the unique mission that God has given you. Mm -hmm. 
So it isn't like any talent is a charism. Like you might be talented at dancing, but it doesn't mean that that's a charism. It becomes a charism when it's being implemented toward that unique mission that God has given you. Right. So you could use dancing. Like that could be your calling if, if dance is bringing people in to know Jesus better. Or if you're using mm-hmm. dance as a way to have dialogue with people or if you that you couldn't a, reach otherwise. a great ability for administration and you use it to organize all kinds of wild catechetical retreats. Yes. <laughs> so it took me a long time to realize that that's my, um, pr- probably my primary strongest charism is administration. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've put it to very good use in this particular role. And so, you know, we spend time thinking about charisms because of their uniqueness And part of the lesson that we teach is we're building armor for the kids um, because we relate the idea of the universal call to holiness and the bestowal of like unique, powerful gifts from God. Um, We relate that to being a superhero or being, you know, a soldier. And that's um, literally the soldier language is from the catechism related to confirmation, that confirmation empowers us. Yeah, that we're becoming strengthened in order to go out and fight and be able to go out into the world and proclaim, you know, fight against the agents of darkness. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's very fitting. So, you know, we have them work with their sponsor or their parent, their sponsor can't make it on trying to identify charisms. And it's funny. So we'll use Rosalina as an example. We're, you know, I'm talking with her about charisms a couple days ago before the retreat and trying to really, like, I'm scratching my mind. I'm like, what charisms does Rosalina have? And it's been, it was just like a struggle for me. And so she goes to the retreat. She's there with her sponsor. And I don't really figure out what she's selected until after the retreat because I'm too busy. And um, the armor you know, consists of a breastplate, two cuffs, and then a mask or a crown, depending. And the breastplate was to represent your char- charisms. So they would write their the charisms that they discerned with their sponsor on the breastplate, you know, and then construct the breastplate out of the red poster board. And Rosalina had a charism written on it, which was... Yeah, fortitude, wasn't it? No. That's not a charism. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. All right, I won't ask you. I won't throw to you. <laughs> I, I, I know it has to do with her um, having courage. No, no, no. To like... It doesn't. Not for charisms. It was encouragement. Encouragement. Yes. I was close. Courage. <laughs> Has it to do with encouragement. <laughs> encouragement. Encouragement. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, that is Rosalina. 100%. She is so encouraging and endearing. And she, um, you know, is supportive through these little cards that she's always making for people that I'm like, how did I not see this before? So it was really cool that she was able to use that time with her sponsor Mm -hmm. to discern that together. Something that I was struggling with trying to figure out myself. Like it's my daughter. I've lived with her her entire life. You know, I should know her. That's why you have a sponsor typically that isn't a parent or a family member, just because they're going to be able to look and help from a different perspective. So it was really awesome to see like they figured that out and it was like a light bulb moment. So all the kids, you know, discerned, you know, a charism or two that they might have, you know, with their sponsor or parents help wrote it on the breastplate. Then we move on to the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are different from charisms because charisms are unique gifts to each of us. Everyone's going to have something that's rather unique and custom to them, but gifts of the Holy Spirit, everyone receives like that's part of what you receive through the Holy Spirit is all the gifts. So the way that we teach the gifts of the Holy Spirit is, you know, we go through the seven and then we say, take this time with your sponsor and talk about the gift one or two that you think you might struggle with that might be hard for you. And what we're going to do is we're going to write this on our crown or our mask and we're going to ask God for extra help in this area. So we pray that God will intensify this particular weaker gift. So, you know, some kids might be very strong in, say, like piety, like they just have a natural reverence, so they don't need that gift strengthened. Right. But maybe they don't, you know, have a great way, you know, they struggle with 
looking at the world the way that God looks at it. So they'd want to increase their wisdom. And so that would be what they'd write. That's what you're thinking of with Rosalina. So what did she have written down? I thought that was fortitude. Yes. Yeah. And I thought that was also fitting because, you know, she, we talked about her last week, that she has a timidity about her in her nature, mm-hmm. that she's just quiet. And sometimes, you know, if we ask her for an opinion or ask her to respond, like sometimes she does in like the quietest voice you can yeah, ever hear. Yeah, right. Although her fortitude was coming out a little bit too hard today as she was pushing her brother down, I'm going to have to say. I don't think that's a virtue that she was demonstrating. (laughs) Trying to make another joke. I got to keep you laughing. All right. Otherwise, this baby's coming any day now. (laughs) That'd be a weird reason for a baby to come. It's called a non sequitur, honey. (laughs) So that's how we approached like teaching the gifts and... You know, it's, it's hard to kind of wrap your mind around the gifts. And I went through and explained each one. And there are several that use words that um, are essentially like synonyms when we use them colloquially. Like um, knowledge, wisdom, mm-hmm. um, counsel. No, mm-hmm. there's another one. Oh, my goodness. But there's a few that you would be like, there is there a difference between those words? So I had to specifically call attention to what made each word different. That's when true. We're going through the gifts. Yeah. And then we moved on, you know, to the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which are the like external signs that you can see in someone that is a follower of Christ that, you know, is peace and um Oh my goodness, I literally just taught this lesson. <laughs> a wisdom in a more colloquial colloquial sense, mm-hmm. um, that kind of thing. So we did the same thing where we have access to all 12 of the fruits. And, you know, so there isn't like that you get one and not the other, but we can recognize the fact that we might, you know, struggle with patience. We might struggle with peace. And so we can ask God to increase those fruits through you know our confirmation so mm-hmm. that was essentially nice. what our confirmation retreat was really focused upon and then after we went through this activity you know they're building armor it's really interesting because the family has got ahead of <laughs> kind of got ahead of themselves so I, I think i heard yeah um and actually it led a few of them down the wrong path so they yeah. didn't quite do things the way they were supposed to which meant they had to kind of redo some of what they had done yeah. which is tough that's hard mm-hmm. But I did tell people to not move on to the next piece of armor. Um, And I I think that it's a good lesson learned for next year. I think otherwise, um, the setting that I used this year was much better than last year. Last year was much more self-directed. And people got done with the activities really fast. But I'm not sure they actually understood like what a charism was or what the gifts or the fruits were. So whereas this, I I stepped people through that part. Yeah, I thought it, it would seem a lot better that just having everybody at tables. Um, with all of the crafts ready to go at their table yeah, made a lot more sense because then they're not running around. They're not trying to like, I got to get my child into this line and we have to get these pieces and, you know, all of those things. So the mind is on like, I got to get mine done versus cool. It's all ready here. Hey, there's charisms. Maybe we can talk about charisms. Yeah. You know, it gives that opportunity because you're just sitting and doing. And I like kind of gave for five minutes and I timed it on my watch so that they had that time to like talk before they yeah. moved on to the craft yeah, again. Not so that important. everyone listened. That's okay, but but you know that it, for those that did, it's it's starting to work. You know, I hope. I mean, so. the Holy Spirit's yeah. going to work. However, he will. He's going to work, but you know, by giving him space, things can happen. That's the hope. I mean, I, I think we're just trying to expose the kiddos to something that is going to resonate with them. Yeah. And obviously everything has to be God's. And that was um, actually great about this particular retreat is um, I went and was able to set up and you helped me on Friday. Yes. So I was completely set up on Friday night, which meant I didn't have to get over to church at 5 a.m. And it would have been so stressful trying to set this up on Saturday morning. Uh, yeah, and that's no. what I did last year because I couldn't set up the night before. Well, I would have been stressing because I couldn't help you in the morning. Yeah, you I were would have been like totally double stress. Place. So it was, um, it was a good, really good thing. We got everything set up before, and I was able to go into church and get the last little things done, and then I actually was able to pray beforehand. Nice. 
And that's where that's I always want to begin. It's kind but, of important. Yeah. So when I do family nights um, or any of these things that I'm doing, you know, a pretty active role, like I like to go into church and pray beforehand. And I feel like there's better fruits from whatever it is oh, that yes. I just ask God and say, God, I'm like really trying, you know, I have everything set up, but please like cast me aside and let your will be done and let me, you know, be, just totally direct me, Lord, like with whatever you need me to say and do. And it just is, everything goes better when you start with God. And yes. then we were able to end with God in adoration. So one of our deacons mm. did adoration for us. Oh, and nice. I gave him kind of the one cheater of like the charisms, gifts, and fruits in advance. So he kind of knew what, what the kids will have like been thinking about. And then everyone went into, everyone that cooperated and actually put armor on. There's a couple older, older kids that would not do it. <laughs> Oh, really? I think they're embarrassed. Um, you know, fifth graders probably. Yeah. But everyone else I encourage to just keep the armor on and go into adoration. And I think it was like a neat image. And I couldn't see very much of it because I was running the AV in the back of the room. But um, Rosie's godmother, bless her heart, was there um, taking photos for me oh, of nice. the retreats. I, have, I still have to look at those. But um, she's so good at, like, grabbing photos um, wow. that... I'm very excited to like see some of what I missed by running the retreat that I'm not able to like dwell in the mo the little moments. Yeah. Yeah. She's good at just getting in there and getting the shot. Yeah. She's very, very good about that. Yeah. So I'm excited to have like some photos to share with families and to kind of see myself what happened. Yeah. And I am planning to select a group photo that we were able to take at the end on the sanctuary space. And send that into the bulletin so we can have that in the bulletin. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of impressive to see all the kids that it are in our program. It was impressive. There were a lot of kids and sponsors up there. It was pretty cool, <laughs> I have to say, because that's about the time I got there. Yeah. And I was walking into the back of the church and starting to grab stuff because we'd already cleaned up the parish hall and got Thank that you. done. That was um, very nice. Well, you know, I know <laughs> that I have to feed my future child um, <laughs> soon. And Mama is... You know, it, well, my appetite has just been so weird lately because I just have no room in my stomach that I usually don't feel hungry um, until I'm eating. Yes. So it was nice to... Well, I was definitely wiped out by the end. Yeah. Oh, something else that's very interesting. This is a little bit of a going back to the beginning of the retreat. So we begin the retreat with um, optional priority confession for the kids, mm -hmm. which um, occurs during our parishes normal confession times yes so <laughs> to what this is the second time i've done this because i did the same thing last year and the exact same thing happened which is always just so disturbing to me um but it's people who you know i i put it in the bulletin that we're going to have priority confessions and i i orient the kids to one of the two lines and there was actually three lines available for most of that period because father Ernest was doing confessions too right up until his talk mm. and um, so people had choices, but there was a couple, I heard from one of my volunteers, a couple of people were like quite cantankerous Yeah, and it's but gonna happen. what really just, Oh, it, it, it kind of, you know, we all have to work on ourselves and I need to like, make sure that I'm not like this, but it was someone who said like, I was here last week and I wanted to have confession with father so-and-so and he wasn't here. And now I want confession with Father So and So, and he was the one that I had the kids going to as a priority confession because he's yeah. kind of expedient. And it was just like you were here last week, and like maybe you can give it to God that this is one day, one Saturday out of the entire year yeah, that, that I, your confession is going to be out of routine. Right. And well, I think it kind of goes to the the challenge we have is. Americans that we want it our way yeah. and you know I want that priest to be my confessor because he gives a really good uh, penance or you know he talks to me really well or he gives me direction you know whatever it is yeah it's like actually no you go to the confessor it doesn't matter which one you go to because the graces don't come from the confessor. The graces come from God. Yeah, absolution. And unless that confessor tells you something completely out of left field, you should be good. Yeah. It's that simple. It is. Um, it was just so, it was, um, 
it, I felt terrible for the volunteer. And I, I told her, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I was worried that this was going to happen. Just so you know, I did all my work to try to make it better. But right. thank you so much for standing over there. It's someone just needs to be there to kind of dis- defend what's happening with the kids. Um, and I, I think it's good for me to be aware because confession's really good at our church right now. Yeah. It's amazing. But it's, it's, um, they're basically the confessional bouncer for yes. these kids. <laughs> they are. That's what they're doing. Yeah. That's, and it's a, a tiny, like daily communicant, um, you know, little lady that I just so adore. She's so lovely. And she was the one that was their bouncer. So, well, that's who you, you know, need. It is. Um, <laughs> but even she got some of the cantankerous and cantankerousness. And I, I did, I yeah. was apologetic to her, but it does make me always need to think about my own anxiety and angst when I'm approaching the sacrament of confession. And I get angsty for sure. Yes, I know. So it's like a good mental check that like, you don't want that to be you in the future, Catherine. You want, <laughs> you want to be a different way than this. And so... You need to, when those situations happen, just give it up to God and know, you know, you can make it the next time, um, the next time you can get to confession. So that was a kind of, um, a hard way to begin the retreat, but not unpredictable either. No, not unpredictable. You got all the kids through. Yeah. It was good. They had a good experience. And some of the parents got through at the end too. Good fruits came up. Which was really good. Yeah. So, and I had a couple kids that were nervous because they hadn't been since last year. And, you know, I was able to say, you know, it's, it's father, blah, blah, so-and-so. Here's your sheet. You don't have to have anything memorized because I'm not big about memorizing the act of contrition. I just think that's dumb and it's not necessary anyway. Um, When the kids are already really nervous about going in, like don't add more burden. And um, so I gave them a sheet with like three different options for act of contrition, depending upon what they wanted to use. And I told them, you know, the, if you forget anything, just ask the priest because yeah. well, they'll, all they're of our priests guide are them wonderful. Yeah. yeah, they're going to guide them through it. So. so yeah, we were able to start with confession and then go through all of that. And we were done by noon, which felt like a big success. Yeah, it was a it was a fruitful Saturday. Um, I don't even know. We went for pizza and then. We did something else. Then you went to adoration. <laughs> then I cooked. And then I don't know what happened past that. Yeah, I kind of fell asleep sort of on the couch. But then you were drilling. Oh, you were putting up a shelf. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I couldn't sleep through the drilling. And then I couldn't go to sleep when I got upstairs. So I just kind of like laid there <laughs> like comatose. Yeah, well, that's what happens while. You know, when we get a new couch and I rearrange everything. I have to make a project. <laughs> it's just what I do. I mean, it looks good now. But yeah, you just decided for whatever reason that you were not exhausted enough yesterday and that you could put a shelf up you had so to get you've done. had a lot of energy like you've been nesting that's like i guess i have ma- <laughs> you have been. been nesting hey baby you're coming soon right you recognize that your wife is just too exhausted to nest which i am i'm not sure i'm gonna do any nesting with this kid this kid's landing in a crazy chaotic household that um, it's going to be extra crazy in March, but we can talk about that later. Sounds good. <laughs> well, um, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, cause it is tonight for us. Yeah. Uh, cause it's been a crazy weekend. Um, if, uh, you have any friends that you think would be interested in our shenanigans, send, uh, send the podcast their way. We'd love to have them be part of our community. And reach out to us at catholicits at gmail.com. Anytime you want. We're always interested in hearing from you. And may the Lord guide us and direct our journey. Amen. <laughs> What's that your phone tapping the whole time? Squeaky, squeaky, oh squeaky phone, gosh. apparently. <laughs> All right. You want to um, say goodbye? Oh, on yeah. YouTube? We can say goodbye. I forgot about that. <laughs> Bye. Have fun storming the castle. <laughs>